The journey to becoming a Division I student athlete can be a struggle. Students all across the country struggle every day with a variety of different obstacles. For first year RJ Friesen though, the road to becoming a tennis player here at UVA was especially challenging. RJ's story has a beginning similar to that of many other young athletes. Tennis has always been in RJ's blood, but RJ has a little something extra that drives him to be so great at tennis. Yeah, so my uh, mother, she played professional tennis um, in the 80s, um, and so uh, tennis has always been around my life. Uh, she introduced it to me at a really young age, so whenever I was like two, three, four years old, she would always like toss me a racket and I would like hit some, some sponge balls in my, in my basement, um, in my diaper. Um, so it's always been around my life, so I can't think of a time where of this is the day I picked up the tennis racket. Wasn't until RJ reached the national stage at the Little Mo tournament when he realized how good he really was. RJ was following in the footsteps of tennis legends like Andy Roddick and Pete Sampras, who also played in this tournament. So uh, for the junior tennis players, uh, there's this tournament called the Little Mo uh, tournament, and so it's 8, 9, uh, 10, and under, 10, 11 under division. And uh, there's a sectional tournament that I ended up winning, then it goes to a regional tournament, uh, winning it, and then I went to like the national stage version of the tournament. and. Uh, when I was competing in that tournament, I realized, hey, I think I'm pretty good at this at this at this game. Ironically, I actually uh, was competing against my roommate here um, at UVA, Christian Alshon. Um, at nine years old, we used to have the biggest that's crazy. battles. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 yeah. That's like you can't make that stuff up. Yeah. RJ would hit his first bump in the road in 2014 when pain in his back impeded his progress at a tournament in October. I, I remember um, feeling uh, a lot of tightness in my back, like I thought I, I had like a muscle spasm. And uh, so I played three matches the first day. And during the second match, I started feeling this, this, this new feeling. I didn't think much of it. And the next day I played another match and the pain worsened. Um, the pain increased a ton. And it got to the point where just rotating um, was, it gave me sharp pain. RJ would enter a vicious cycle of rehab that would last an incredibly long time. And I kept on finding myself doing the same uh, process of being in a back brace um, from 6 to 12 weeks um, and then doing the physical therapy for a few weeks and then coming back to tennis. And I just had, um, I just didn't really have any success and I found myself doing the same process over and over again. At the end of all of this though, RJ would find help from a doctor in Seattle after reading an article about a fellow tennis player who had dealt with a very similar situation. What was previously diagnosed as a simple back injury turned out to be a broken L5 back vertebrae as a result of the constant re-injuring. This forced RJ into a back brace for the next seven months. In the end, RJ elected to take over a full year off of tennis in order to fully heal his body. No practice, no teamwork and he couldn't even pick up a racket. I didn't know what life without tennis would be like, um, so I, I, I learned that um, life is good without tennis or not, um, but it's way better with tennis, I can tell yeah. you that. When I was in a back brace for seven months, I would uh, go sit down, literally lie down in my living room and just uh, visualize going through a, a normal tennis practice and kind of feeling um, how, how uh, hitting a tennis ball would feel like. This story ends on a high note, however, as this October, RJ made his triumphant return to the courts in an exhibition match for UVA tennis and emerged victorious. It was literally a dream come true for me. Um, I was able to, I mean, be not only be completely pain-free, but also to um, just enjoy the, enjoy the game I love, which is something really special. I remember being really emotional after the first match. Uh, I remember just going to the changeover um, after the match was done, or the, the bench, and just just crying for like 10 minutes. Um, it, was, it was just, it, it literally felt like I, I won Wimbledon.